it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I thought I would do a video on some of the different considerations and subtleties of driving in fence posts using uh, hand hydraulics as they say and uh, for me the, the, the cat's meow the easiest way to do it is to get uh, a heavy pipe cast iron pipe like this with uh, it's, it's thread, uh, one threaded end and you thread a cap on like that and uh, I don't know what this thing weighs maybe 30 pounds or more but you just fit it over the post like that and then you just sort of lift it up and drop it. I mean, you can you can drive it down too if you want to get extra force. But the main thing is to have if you have enough strength to lift it, uh, gravity does the rest, and it just hammers it in, uh, you know, uh, gradually into the ground. Um, it's handy to have a framing level like this. Uh, although I, I I usually start off I can't remember I, f I shot this a few days ago. Uh, I think I usually start off with the idea of of checking the level on every one of these. But as I go, I just do everything by eye and don't do anything careful like that. <laughs> also, depending on how true the, the post is that you're driving, you know, if it's got a perfectly straight edge, then yeah, it makes sense. But sometimes they're crooked. So uh, uh, maybe you'd have to have like a four foot long uh, level to get everything just right. But that's a bit inconvenient. You, you want something you can stick in your pocket. like. So, I mean, it, 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 it all depends on your sense of aesthetics and how proper everything needs to be for you. Um, but uh, one other consideration is that sometimes these, I mean, these are ones I actually cut from trees in my yard, but you can buy these things at garden, uh, in certain kinds of gardening stores. The diameter of the post may be such that it'll jam up and get stuck on the pipe. Uh, so one way to deal with that, you know, if the, if the post is too big around, uh, the pipe because it's got a taper, um, the post has a natural taper because it's from a tree. Um, it might get stuck on to the post driver because it's like a sleeve and in a way that's very difficult to get it off. So if it seems to be a bit tight, one thing you can do is just baton a knife like that. Um, but an easier fix, <laughs> depending on, you know, how big the problem is, to, is to have a one, a boat of, I mean, it depends on, you can have different lengths of these, but generally speaking, uh, like a one foot length piece of uh, wood that will easily fit in there, right? A spacer, right? So you put the spacer in, and then you put that over the over the post, and then it won't jam up because it's it's not coming down far enough. See how that post gets gets the diameter gets greater and greater as you go down. So by having that little spacer in there, the the uh, post driver, the sleeve basically won't get so far down the post that it'll jam up. So that's a really easy fix. Uh, as opposed to like, you know, hewing the uh, perfectly proper shape onto a post. So I thought I'd do, uh, the, re the rest of this video is me uh, driving in this post and encountering various problems in doing that, uh, almost the full gambit of problems, <coughs> over, really. Uh, and I drive in a number of, uh, I don't know, I have some bonus footage where I drive in uh, some more posts to give you a sense of how long it takes. Um, this one I'm taking a long time because it, I was having problems with it. Uh, and I'll talk about that as we go along here and show you how I dealt with it. But, you know, here I am just trying to, uh, you know, get it level and, you know, frigging around with it. Bearing in mind that wherever the level is in contact with the post, if that part of the post is not true, that is to say perfectly straight, then a short little level like that isn't much use. It's hand, handy for framing because you're using dimensional lumber that are milled and they're, you know, almost perfectly straight. Uh, anyway, here I am using this thing and, um, you know, it, it does take... I, I won't won't lie to you. It takes some strength. Let's say it weighs 35 pounds. Maybe I don't know what that weighs. Maybe 50 pounds. I, I get. I don't know. Uh, all I know is that after you drive about four or five of these things in, you, a guy like me needs a break. <laughs> At the very least, you have. It's like you're lifting it. You're lifting something. Uh, you know, a small ch a child over. You're lifting, right? The hard work is lifting. And then if on top of it, instead of you're letting gravity uh, drive it down, you're actually driving it with force, it's double the work. Um, for whatever reason, with this particular one, I thought I'd hewed enough of it, um, but it got stuck on there. Um, so it was perfect because I hadn't planned, I'd planned to do this video so that it, 
to show you how to avoid having it get stuck on like that, but it got stuck on anyway because I guess I hadn't hewed enough of it down. I wasn't using the spacer. Um, so it just made sense to um, continue the video and just show me dealing with this. Uh, so my first attempt was just using what was lying around to try to get it off, and of course none of this stuff works. So here I am. I've got a, uh, I think there was a piece of a 4x4 four four there, and I was, I had it sort of jammed into the crack, and I was hitting up on it with a rock. Um, and there I, here I am trying to use, uh, for some reason, thinking I've got superhuman strength and I can pull this thing off. Um, of course, I don't have the strength. It's jammed on there, you know, you're not, I'm not strong enough to do that. Plus, it, usually with things like that, it needs to be shocked off, right? If you, Let's say I had enough strength. I'd probably pull the whole thing out. Let's say I had uh, f five times my strength. And now I go back to the thing that didn't work before, thinking it'll work a second time, which it doesn't. Um, you know, kind of, you, you got to kind of have a metal on metal type thing. You got to have vibrations and shock to, to deal with that. So here I am with some actual tools. Uh, I got a cold, ch cold chisel and uh, just a heavy hammer. I'm not using the chisel part of the chisel, I'm just using the head. Yeah, I should be wearing some uh, protective goggles here. But I'm just putting the, the head of that uh, uh, cold chisel. Uh, on the edge there and just just tapping it with that uh, I don't know what that is a two pound or one pound maul or whatever uh, if you look really closely you can it's probably loosened up already but I just didn't notice it if you look really closely you can see it jumping a little bit so now I think it's so much easier <laughs> I just my garden's about 50 yards from the house so sometimes I just <laughs> don't want to walk back to the house and get another thing to bring back Anyway, that was a bit of a pain, but, uh, yeah, so, stick with the spacer, <laughs> you know, it's just a much easier, uh, solution, because it, it's going to prevent it from jamming down and that sort of thing. So, yeah, now I've, uh, dealt with that problem, I got that thing off, and, um, hammering that down, and, uh, that's, uh, now it's just a matter of getting it to the, the, the height you want and having everything, uh, be consistent. So, I mean, you have to keep checking it and having, uh, what I had done is I'd walked to the post that's next to this one and measured it roughly how high it was relative to my body. And so I'd like just around where my throat is sort of thing was about, you know, how high need that be? So, no, not quite high enough. Um, so, uh, that's, that's how I gauge height on these things. I don't use a tape measure or anything like that. I mean, really depends on how perfect you want. But for, for me, you know, this is just a garden fence. It's not uh, aesthetic. I'm building it in my backyard. And I got lots of space back here. So I, I just need it to function properly. And for those that don't know, I've, I've got a regular garden, 2,500 square feet. I'm ex I expanded it. And I, I need a fence around the whole thing or it'll... Uh, get attacked by deer and porcupines. Anyway, here I am just trying to demonstrate how solid the post is by, you know, swinging off of it, <laughs> looking like a fool. But uh, anyway, so that's that post done. Uh, so, yes, very good. So uh, I thought I'd do a little bit more footage just to, I, I would do the rest of this video driving some more posts in, just showing how I go along at this, you know, when I'm, when I'm not trying to do a, a special video on everything that can go wrong, but just how it normally goes. Now, bearing in mind, any one of these posts, you drive it in the ground, you can hit a rock. And if you hit a rock, you got to take it out and move it over. And where I live, there's rocks everywhere. So, you know, if you can get three posts in in a row without hitting a rock, you're doing really, really good. Um, because there's just rocks everywhere, so you got to do stuff like that. Um, and usually, what even sometimes you might not even hurt, hit a rock, but it, it gets moved by a rock and moves the thing off to the side. But uh, anyway, I think the remainder of this video isn't too long, um, so you can get a sense of how long it takes, right? So uh, I, don't know, I think I might want to do one of these every five minutes or so, maybe even less than that. I don't know. I think once I stop, at some point in this video, I stop using this uh, stupid framing level and just do everything by eye, and that speeds things up a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I mean, use what, do what makes sense to you, and, and, you know, some people want everything perfectly straight. My opinion on these things, you're, you're driving them in the ground. I drive them down about two feet into the ground, and uh, on any given year, because of frost and stuff like that, they're gonna heave, they're gonna move. However perfect you get these, if you're doing it this way, they're not gonna stay the way you put them in. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> it's really a bit overkill to be uh, frigging around with uh, a little uh, 
framing level or any kind of level trying to get things pretty it's, it's one thing if you're putting in like you know you're you know making a, a big hole with an auger with sonnet tubes and concrete and all that stuff but for a garden fence I don't think that makes any sense at all now this one it looks to me see how it's the more I drive it the more it bends off see how it's, it's leaning away from my body uh, and that's because I'm onto a rock there see how I'm, I'm kind of just by looking I can sort of feel that it's off I'm trying to bend it back but it's against something and there's something moving it over that's why you see no matter <laughs> I keep driving and it keeps leaning over and uh, I think I tell myself who cares just leave it but I, I might actually pull that back out later in the video um, which is useful too because you can see how to pull these out and this time of year it's a good time of year to do stuff like this because uh, I mean the ground was still frozen uh, where I am here um, so I was I was pushing through uh, a couple inches of ice and stuff like that but you, you got the thing sharpened to a point and you've got a lot of force on it so if it's only a, a few inches of uh, frost ice that sort of thing you, you can get them through so it's it's you know it's a good time of year to do it but all the all the soil beneath the uh, that ice is very wet it's very moist sort of thing right because you can tell the, the snow's all gone here and things I mean we could get another snowstorm we got snow just a couple days ago but um, really it's you know spring has sprung it's a couple days after the, um, the spring uh, the solstice so you know we're at, what is it? The spring equinox right so uh, yeah it's we're, we're it's, it's certainly still very cold and a lot of my uh, garden beds the soil is still frozen um, even though it doesn't look like things are frozen from this video because you can't see any ice but where I live there's just a lot of water and a lot of moisture and uh, the soil freezes up pretty good from all the snowing and melting and raining and freezing and all that stuff that happens over the course of the winter so uh, yeah the garden beds are still basically you know they have three or four inches of ice on them uh, at the time when I made this video uh, maybe in a few weeks that'll change but you can see I'm moving along pretty good. Just, I don't know what this is. Maybe, uh, you know, a post or so every five minutes or so. It, that's not bad. I mean, it's, and I mean, if you're younger or in better shape, of course, that takes a different uh, amount of energy or, you know, whatever. It really depends on your level of physical fitness and that sort of thing. Um, but see, I'm, look, I go back and look at this one. I'm like, oh, that's just not it's just not level I don't like it it's, I, could, I got the other one in and went nice and straight and this one I could just tell it was grabbing something so uh, I just wiggle it around a little bit and pulled it and I just moved it about six inches to the side hoping that whatever was in the way it might not have been a rock it could have been a like a submerged tree it could be anything right um, but I thought maybe if I just move it over a little bit, maybe it, it, whatever was in the way won't be in the way. And it turns out it wasn't. <laughs> so you know, um, sometimes that's all it takes, right? And uh, I knew that that one was bent like almost a foot out of line at the, at the top. So it was bent enough out of out of uh, out of true, out of level, out of straightness that it would bother me. <laughs> I don't need things perfect, but way off. You can see it's kind of lined up with the other one just by just a crude eyeing of the, the lines there so that's what you know you want right you just line you get one in nice and straight and you line the other ones up against that and uh, I'm sure there's someone that's appalled by my suggesting that but for me the goal is to just get it done it just you know the goal is to build a fence that will keep animals out of your garden it's not to build a fence that you know people will slow down as they drive by and say oh my god look at that fence look at the lines look at the perfection I don't care about that <laughs> I don't care I'd rather people look at my garden and say oh my god look at how big that uh, zucchini is right <laughs> so <laughs> I'm more impressed with how how the condition of my soil and you know how uh, successful I am in, in getting a really good uh, yield out of the things I'm trying to grow for food but uh, anyway that's a general idea driving in fence posts you know using a pipe pretty low tech you know pretty cheap way to get pipes in there pretty exhausting I gotta tell you <laughs> totally spent at the end of this but um, yeah I wanna... so anyway I hope you found that interesting if you did please like share subscribe check out my podcast maritimegardening.com and until next time get out there get at it have fun in your garden thanks for watching